Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Joe Moore from Tanzu Labs here at VMware. And we got a balanced team together to talk about balanced teams. So uh, we have uh, Toby here from an engineering background, Annie from a product management background, and Jason from a design and user experience background. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. So uh, Jason, what has been your experience uh, transitioning to uh, you know, from a world where you weren't working as part of a balanced team to working as part of a balanced team. So, yeah, I think that the challenge with balanced teams that folks have when they're transitioning to them is that uh, they kind of struggle against some of the norms they may be coming up against from prior um, businesses or companies that they may have been working at. So, and I feel like as long as people can kind of get over that moment and really start to hear the other disciplines that they feel probably are less important than their own, um, they'll have a much more successful time transitioning to a balanced team philosophy. Toby, what has been your experience like from an engineering point of view? Yeah, um, for me, the transition to balanced team kind of came in a few different phases. And so often when folks see this framework, the first thing they do is like, cool, we've got engineering, we've got users, we've got business, let's put a designer here, a product person here, and an engineer here. And oftentimes they kind of stay in their own lanes, and that's what a lot of companies do today, right? Sometimes they're on the same team, sometimes they're across organizations. When it comes to transitioning to balanced team, you want to co-locate those folks on the team as much as you can. Um, it's given me some great opportunities to do things like sit in on user interviews, which from an engineer, if I'm implementing software and I understand the user more deeply, that's uh, profoundly um, helpful when it comes to even how to implement a front-end feature, back-end feature, those sorts of things. And I really haven't gotten those connections before without working in a balanced team kind of environment. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, speaking of product management, what has been your experience, Annie? Sure. So this was also a totally new concept to me when I came to labs, and it definitely took some adjusting. I kind of came from a background of startups. Um, so the PM, like when I was at a startup, was responsible for a lot. And honestly, it just did not feel healthy or sustainable. So when I slowly adapted to this uh, way of working with a really truly balanced team where responsibilities were shared, everyone shared ownership for the success or the failure or different learning objectives, um, it was kind of like a, a breath of fresh air where I was like, ah, oh, I, can, I can breathe again and know that like, my engineers have me on like this stakeholder discussion. I know that the design folks are gonna push back on that one um, risky area that we were looking at a prototype. So uh, it took a while to adjust, not gonna lie, but then I was definitely hooked. Uh, what have you found to be some of the benefits of uh, working with a balanced team and part of a balanced team, you know, especially from a product manager's point of view? I think having a balanced team, you really have a, uh, you don't have this like, central point of failure or a single point rather, because um, now all of this is shared. So now if Toby and Jason are my team, they are fully aware of, hey, these are the risks that we're trying to buy down. This is what's coming up. So everyone kind of has a sense of, hey, what are we doing to make sure we kind of lessen some of the risk around this product? Yeah, Jason, what do you think? I, I think one of the, the the risks that we have that is it can be kind of spun in a, a positive way is um, a very classic challenge that we have in the industry around like bad actors on a team. Like we've all had that one person on a team who somehow is able to gum up a meeting and change the topic entirely or get the you know production ground to a halt because there's something else that's happening. Um, and oftentimes that person stays on that team for a long time. And that again, kind of erodes some of that psychological safety that a team has. And that's oftentimes the point of failure in those situations. They, they tend to affect a balanced team more in the sense that everyone else is trying to work together. And here's this one person who, you know, comes in to stand up and is like, I'm going to go work alone today on like machine learning when nobody asked for anyone to work on machine learning on the product. In a balanced team, because it's a little bit more acutely felt and because there isn't a point of contact to kind of have to run it up the ladder who might bury something like that. I know, Joe, that you and I both have been on teams where it's like, here's someone who does not like the philosophy, doesn't like balanced teams, really wants to work alone. Three months later, they're the biggest advocate. Right. And like they understand that like, once that trust is there, like they realize how freeing that can actually be. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and you bring up a really good point that, you know, we uh, we have a balanced team here and we all come from our traditional disciplines. But when you get down to it, uh, as you're kind of pointing out, Jason, it's really all about people. Yeah. What do you think, Toby? You're going to go uh, write some machine learning code and, uh, you know, for that uh, whatever random uh, non-machine learning app that you're working on right now? I mean, we should probably put blockchain in first um, yes. because that's clearly the right place to start. Realistically, some of the benefits um, that I've seen, especially with pairing with design and PM, is from, from a technology perspective, I kind of come from the opinion of most any technical decision is justifiable with proper context. There are obviously edge cases, so I don't want to get flamed for like certain, certain things. But when I have um, the risks in my head that Annie is researching and the context of what our users actually need from Jason, our designer, I can now scale appropriate technology decisions based off of more information, which makes it more likely I'm going to make good decisions. Um, the other thing that I really love about working balance team is I, I really love pairing with designers. I think it's great. Um, I think, you know, being able to sit down with a designer and iterate on a design where I can change front end code uh, with them and they can give me immediate feedback on, okay, move this one pixel to the left, one pixel to the right or whatever it might be. Um, those little things all add up to a more beneficial product. And I've never seen that kind of collaboration really without a balanced team. There's always some sense of someone fighting for authority, whether it be, the developer protecting their code, the designer protecting the design, or the product manager protecting the backlog, and really effective balanced teams start to break down that authoritarian structure, right. and they're all working together towards a single product. This was amazing. Uh, this is an awesome opportunity to have a balanced team talking about balanced teams, um, both the uh, you know the nitty gritty, the uh, the benefits, and some of the challenges. Uh, and we wanted to be super honest and and transparent, you know here. Um, uh, talking about something that we think is super important and we hope it was valuable. Uh, we appreciate everybody's uh, feedback. Feel free to get feedback to us however you can. And uh, thank you everybody for joining. And then hopefully we'll see you again on another uh, one of these videos.